And unfortunately, um, we lost 4-0 um, away from home to an Everton side that most people would, wouldn't regard as good. To an Everton side the prior week who lost to Fulham 1-0, right? Uh, club that's already going to get relegated. So it kind of really just, it really did throw me off, to be honest. I didn't really expect that level of performance. Um, the team, I, w- I would say, wasn't that bad. I don't think the team was as bad as people are making out. I think considering what we had available and considering the opposition, I think that was probably our best strength side. Um, we had Lindelof playing at right back for some reason. We had Chris Morning and Jones at centre back and Delo at left back. Which is a bit worrying, um, considering the team that we were playing. I think it would have been probably beneficial just to play Damian at right back or to get a kid in to cover the left flank. I just think there is under no circuit, or maybe the whole point was to have those three at the back, has three centre backs, and then have the f- and then have kind of the low out on the left in the midfield four, and then probably kind of pushing up maybe. Um, but regardless, it didn't work, and I guess. I, w- I would like to start this off by saying, you know, again, it's no individual player's fault because I think some of these players are only there because of mismanagement of our club. I think prior managers, um, I think the owner, I think Ed Woodward, who's kind of been, I don't know how he's gotten away with just, um, he's just been immune from any kind of um, threat to his job. He's still there making decisions, signing, um, giving people contracts. Um, giving the manager a contract, announcing new punch deals, that doesn't make any sense because he's been essentially at the helm and uh, and kind of ushered in three failed managers and he still seems to be, um, kept, um, in a, he still seems to have kept his job even though he's failed in his recruitment of managers there. That's another topic for another day. But it's no individual players for, I think the players are only doing as best as they can do with the ability that they're given um, and considering the just the overabundance of averageness we have in that team, it's just very hard to... Uh, to play well when you've got those kind of players playing for you, right? Essentially, I look at that back four, and I say to myself, you could probably have a, an argument to replace every single one of them, including Lindelof and Delo, who probably are the most promising, probably have the most, um, you probably have the most potential in order to kind of make it um, in in their United career and then go on to win big trophies. But even those two players probably could be on the bench. You could probably have a senior player in front of them, pushing them uh, uh, to be better, right? And then when they come on a sub, they try to do better. They try to play against injured. They want to improve. They want to have their name on the team sheet. You could probably have an argument that two of the midfield three shouldn't be anywhere near the starting lineup. Matic because he's too old and too slow. And Fred because he's still probably trying. He's, he's still uh, getting acclimatized to playing in the Premier League. And we still haven't seen the best of him. Then up front, you've got three strikers who on their day could be world beaters. But right about now are suffering. Rashford probably because he's still got a knock and an injury. Lukaku because this probably isn't this probably is a level above what he can do, right? It's probably not where he needs to be. And I think in general, outside of that, the team isn't necessarily built around his strengths. Um, we don't necessarily uh, feed balls in through the channels, clip balls over the top, um, transition very quickly in order for him to run on and to finish. I think that's where he kind of is his strengths. I think even though he looks like a big, aggressive, burly striker in the mould of a Drogba, in the mould of a Duncan Ferguson, in the mould of a whatever, um, and a Dean Ashton, whatever he may be called, right? He's not that player. He's more he's more similar to a Chikorita, to a Michael Owen, uh, to a James Vardy than he is to any of those players I mentioned previously. He plays better on the shoulder of defender. Last shoulder defender, running onto balls with little to no time to think about things, just instinctual. That's why he delivers the best. Um, um, options for you the moment you try to get him involved in the build-up play and have him um, take the ball in deep and spread out wide and run into the box the same level same way that maybe a Harry Kane does it for Tottenham is where you maybe see him uh, falter and kind of really really um, suffer when he plays for us um, and then of course he has the reputation of not being able to do it against a big club so cool then you've got a Martial who's um, um, epically inconsistent right never seems to be able to maintain a level of performance that gives you any kind of hope that he's going to be a world beater because he has all the ability to be a world beater. Yeah, he's got he's got ice cold finishing in front of goal. He's dribbling with the ball at his feet is incredible. He can run at pace really really well. He's incredibly direct, um, but he just doesn't seem to be inconsistent enough. And I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's because you know, uh, back in the day when Ibrahimovic was here. He got stripped to the number nine and that kind of never really sat well with him at that time. Then he kind of got pushed out wide and maybe he he always sees himself as maybe a main striker. I don't know what the deal was, but he's never really um, replicated um, the heady heights of his first season when he played underneath Ang Bang out, right? Cool, no worries. But that team should be probably enough to beat this Everton side, right? 
it probably should be enough to beat the Everson side, considering the players that they got out there. But unfortunately, most football nowadays, unfortunately, or, or for, unfortunately for us, isn't that isn't dictated by individual players. It's mostly dictated by the strength of your overall team. And Everton came out with a clear game plan. They were they came out to pressurize our defense, uh, to put pressure, especially on the back four who are incredibly shy on the ball, and effectively made them crumble. Um, they pushed back our midfield. Our midfield was able to get on the ball. Our strikers were isolated up top, and eventually they got a couple of chances, or maybe three or four, three no two chances first of all, and they scored from the first two chances they got. And then from then on, we were chasing the game. The more we chased it, more space opened up, and the game ended up four 0 now, I think overall, the um, impression that I got on this performance was that it feels as if some of the players who have kind of performed for Solskjaer in the first three months when he started have suddenly sort of like realised what level they're at. I think a lot of us United fans were very aware that the three, the three months that we had with Solskjaer were a bit of a fluke. They weren't necessarily um, indicative of the level the players are actually at. I think now we always knew the players were shit. We knew that it wasn't always Mourinho's fault. It wasn't because Mourinho was making them feel sad or playing rubbish. It was because they're rubbish, right? And I think Mourinho's comments that, even though they were a bit rude and they were a bit disrespectful to the players that were playing, his comments that um, it was a great achievement to finish second with that team is incredibly true, right? Considering the level of players that Man City have, considering how good Klopp has Liverpool playing, considering how consistent Pochettino has Tottenham playing, it was a credible result for us, that United team, to finish second, especially especially considering the levels at which some of the players were playing and just the overall lack of talent in and ability and special and speciality, specialized, whatever we may be called, in a team, right? You look at our fullback, for instance, right? We've got there's no specialist, right? Backup, right? Back you remember Mourinho back in Chelsea, like two world class players for every position? We don't have that. We don't have a like for like replacement for sure when he's not around. We don't have a like for like replacement for Dalo even, or a senior player in front of him that can challenge him. None. Centre-backs. With they get both get injured, what happens then? You play Matic and centre-back. You, you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of the most bizarre things I've seen in a long time where a club of United stature is incapable of building a squad that can challenge, not win, that can challenge for top honours, that can actually mount a credible threat that teams are scared of, um, that other teams, you know, a, a, a team full of players other teams want. Like, you know, apart from David De Gea, what, who wants any of our players? Like, for real? Who they, who would they buy? A Paul Pogba? Really? Are you sure? Do you want that influence in your dressing room? Do you want all the distractions of his social media team? Do you want all of that? Do you want all the dancing? Do you want all of this? Entertainment? Probably not. So we're in a very, very peculiar state at the moment. Um, I think this is probably the most important next few months for United in terms of what we do next. The story I've heard earlier on about um, supposedly Mike Phelan being given a football director's role is incredibly worrying. Um, I think for any United fan out there, I think you should be worried if they're looking at Mike Phelan to be the football director of our club, considering the lack of direction we've had in the, in the, in the year prior to that. It probably seems like a little bit of an emotional, reactional, um, panic decision to make. I think Mike Phelan getting given a job maybe a few years down the line once we've kind of got our, set ourselves settled, once the actual professional with experience has come in and done that job and kind of laid some foundation might make some more sense. But hiring Mike Phelan now just makes absolutely no sense. It's just more cutting corners, more maybe saving money on salary, more of a more of a decision to get somebody that can maybe be a bit of a yes man in that respect. Not in terms of, I don't think, I don't think Mike Phelan is a yes man, but getting those kind of people involved in the club who are kind of familiar, who've been there from the beginning of this kind of transition probably a bit more favourable to Ed Woodward's position than it is maybe getting somebody else completely outside of the club who might ice Ed Woodward out of the discussions and, and whatever it may be for the club. And I just think in general, there's there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, a lot of honest kind of, a lot of really brutal and ruthless work needs to be done, like in terms of the players that we need to get rid of. Like, I think I've agreed with a couple of other commentators. It's not necessarily who we buy, it's who we get rid of. I think we've always had that kind of problem at United. We never seem to be get rid of our shit players. They always seem to just hang around like a bad smell. Um, Fellaini is probably one of the best examples of that. You know, he stays at our club. He stays at our club ahead of us. A player like Daily Blind, who's now playing in the Champions League final. I mean, um, sorry, um, Champions League semi final um, for Ajax, right? A player who's an incredible footballer, a player who kind of could play numerous positions. Who probably would have been able to help us out a lot more than Fellaini have done in the past. 
Um, so a lot of weird decisions have been made over the years that I don't currently necessarily agree with. And I think, um, I don't know, man. I'm just hoping that they make the right choice. But the things, the rumblings that you've been hearing so far from the team and from what, um, I mean, from the club in general, doesn't give me any kind of hope, really, um, that they're going to do the right thing. It just doesn't give me any hope. I don't think it's going to happen. Especially when you start, you start when you start thinking about Mike Feeders being football director, when you give Oligandos the job, you know, ahead of the, the end of the season without really kind of being ruthless and thinking about what the club really needs going forward. I think you'll be probably setting yourself for failure. I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd hope I am being proven wrong, but I just can't see um how this is gonna get better with the current um administration or the current ownership at the helm. I just don't see it get better. Because if Ed Woodward still thinks he can keep his job and he do- he doesn't feel like his job sh- it should be at any kind of threat, even though he's he's kind of, you know, ushered in free failed manager since I suppose he's retired, I think we've got a big issue there. That's the issue that I've got here. And if we're giving into player power if we're incapable of seeing what is actually happening in the world of football with football directors, with sports directors, with people that can kind of steer the ship at the top and then kind of implement coaches that can kind of, you know, um, cultivate or develop a style of play. If we're not necessarily seeing what the benefits of that are, then we're really, really lost. But again, it's, I'm, I don't want to be too bummed out about it. I'm hoping we have a reaction against City tomorrow in, in the league, but I doubt it. I'm not sure why people are so confident we're going to go there and pull, and, and, and pull out a result from them for my asses, it's not going to be possible. Sid, Sid, you're trying to win the league. I don't know what we're trying to do. I don't think some of the players even want to try and get in the top four. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to happen personally. We're, going to, we're probably going to get spanked by Man City, and that will probably be that will pro- that will probably be it. Will probably serve us better to get spanked by Man City than it will be to win five nil. You know, just because I think our club is so short sighted that somehow they're going to look at that result and think, oh yeah, see, no, there's nothing wrong. In the same way how the first three months, because we kept winning, we had that massive, we had that long unbeaten run. They kept seeing it as if nothing was wrong that was going on right now. And I just don't think that's right. Um, I don't think that's right. I, think, I, don't, I don't think we're in a position by chance. I think we got here because of mismanagement and we're going to continue to be here through mismanagement. But again, what do I know? <laughs>